Hello everyone and welcome back to Lawrence Plays Factorio Space Exploration with Crastorio 2. It's Friday so I'm going to be having a look at what we got up to in the last stream and just sort of talking through these things in a bit of detail so you can see what we've been getting up to. And the first thing I want to talk about is the Astro 3 science packs because, well, I've been working working quite hard on those. I got the, um, I solved the, the problems I've been talking about last time which was um, these broken data cards which are it's sorted, but it's not quite tidied up yet. I've just been collecting them down at the end of the belt here to get them out of the way. Um, but but other than that, they, they've stopped being passed through now because I've put the filter in properly. However, you'll notice there's some horrible gaps in here and nothing is running because we've not got any negative pressure data that's actually reachable by the machines. And that's because we've run out of data cards. We'll get onto that in a bit more detail later. I've also, way up here where the catalogues are going into the train, I've put in these splitters. So we've got a belt coming through here with the, which will have the tier 2s and the tier 3s on it. We're splitting it off to go up here, and then we're splitting off the tier 2s to go in through, through this, this belt, which is watching for the correct number of tier 2s, and the tier 3s go through here, which is watching for tier 3s when there's a thousand, a thousand of those. So that will allow the system to run until there's a thousand of each type of um, catalogue in here. Then they'll be passed through up here with the tier 1, tier 2, tier 3 into the uh, train up here. And actually we're not doing too badly. We've got a significant quantity of these catalogues in here. That's 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 going well, even if we are now rather short of memory cards. So we, yeah, we only need another sort of hundred and two, probably two hundred and fifty between the two wagons, I would suspect, to make the train full, and so it'll set off again. Because if we look here, you can see we've got yeah, we've got a thousand of each of the first two, and then yeah, two hundred and fifty-four to fill up the uh, fill up the third time. So yes, that's that's going. It's going well. It's not going 100%, but it's going well. We've got a nice supply of the of the catalogues in here, and the science is going quite well up at the other end. So that's pretty good. In order to help keep this running properly, I also came along here and I put in some more of the uh, these um, observation frame um, creation uh, machines. So as you may well may hopefully remember over here, and actually this is grand. Well, we've run out. Oh, we've run out of beryllium as well. That's that's um, unfortunate. Uh, that's going to need some uh, some investigation as well. So the beryllium is probably all going to somewhere else and just getting swallowed up. So that's going to need expanding. But anyway, yeah. In theory, we are making. We are now. We now have one, two three sets of uh, sets of four machines making these and they're in fours like that because it takes four machines with no speed modules to fill up a belt so i guess that means i could go over to two mach two machines with speed modules and um but you know it, this this is this is fine for now uh so yes, they're being fed down here, and, and we're getting through a lot of these when everything's running f full whack, um, because they're pouring in here, being used up by these telescopes, and by these telescopes, and by these telescopes. So yeah, we're getting through a lot of the uh, of the blank observation frames. Um, down here, no, no, they are, they are, they're, they've all been used up. We, we, we've, we've run out. It, it, it's a tragedy. We, we, we're going to need to, yeah, going to need to get that boosted somehow, and uh, and. Um, well, I say get that boosted. We're going to need to bring in a lot more beryllium so that all of this will run happily. And then thing, then everything will be fine and great and happy. So, yes, there's an, another thing I have did, did in relation to that is I've split off, you'll see here, I've split off the, the purple and the red data cards now going off up this way as well. And that's because I'm feeding them into the astrometric data production up here. Because now we've switched over all these machines over to, as you can see along here with the uh, with the number threes that are showing up, we've gone from the tier two to the tier three recipe. And that's the one that uses all seven different types of um, data card on the input. And But in, 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 in return for that, we'll give you 20... Um, cards on the output which is it's an almost it's almost one to three which is really really good and that means why you have to also pour in a massive supply of the blank data cards now i did notice as i was looking at that we seem to be very very full of oh i see this particular one is is broken because there's supposed to be an underground pipe in there in order to get the uh, the, the thermal fluid out of it if we look at this one <laughs> you'll see this one is working nicely we've got it's, it's full of um it's full of out output cards and so yeah it, it, it's great we've got we've got all of the astrometric data we could possibly want that's running very nicely in the brief moment when this was working, before we ran out of uh, memory card... No, no, sorry, I take it back. We have got memory cards. It must just be the frames we've run out of then. Let's, ch let's check that out again. So down here... Yes, we're putting in the memory cards. The Yeah, and we're full, full of purple. Full of... We've run out of... Yes, yeah, so we've, we've not run out of red frames to make the red cards. Why have these stopped then? Why are you, why are you sad? Oh, it's run out of um, aeroframe scaffolds. Okay. So that's going to be something we're going to need to need to sort out because that is that has broken this whole area. But before it broke, when things were actually working nicely, I extended all of these machines around here because we didn't have we didn't have enough science being made. And so I've put in more telescopes. Oops, something's been destroyed. Okay, apparently while I wasn't looking, my um my my iron mine on out on Talos got uh, got ravaged and is now is now completely broken and that's going to cause some problems. Oh, I see. There's a worm over here with um, with excessive range. So the way to deal with that is to hit it with a couple of uh, nukes and probably take out those as well. 
and that will cause it, that that will force it to behave itself. Uh, I'm not going to be able to fix this be able to fix this belt from here. Maybe when we reload the game for the um, multiplayer, it'll stop being it'll stop doing it'll stop having this sort of problem. Or maybe the um, fighters will just come in and ravage absolutely everything. Who knows? Either way, hopefully that won't happen um, in in the. Uh, <laughs> hopefully that won't actually happen in the uh, when we're playing properly. That said, I don't particularly care about this as long as the. Oh yeah, okay. We do have a splitter over here that's sending the filters around this way, so it's not going to be the end of the world. I could set that to our priority to the left, and then it won't bother sending any out this way. I'm not actually using this system anymore, really, because we're getting plenty of iron from the uh, from the core mining. So I don't think that's too much of an issue. Anyway, what well, before I was so rudely interrupted. I was talking about how I've been expanding now over, over here, and how we've made, how I put in some extra telescopes, extra telescopes here, and these were keeping up at the time before we before we ran out of um, the, the exposure frames. Uh, we were, this, this was absolutely fine; it was all keeping up, and also more machines down here. And I expect these to keep up, but I haven't been able to properly check, check yet because I got distracted, went away, and did other things. And now to come back to look again, it's all broken. So you know, it was a nice idea but it seems to be struggling a little bit. I should probably actually also mention while I'm staring at this bit that not only have I expanded it by putting in more machines, I've also filled them all up completely with tier 3 speed modules. So these are now running significantly faster than they would than, than they were before. This one's at plus 460%. Oh yes, cuz I put in beacons as well. So these are running these are running almost six times their normal speed. That's amazing. Uh, this, this, as of those, these ones down here are only at uh, two and a half times their normal speed, but that's still pretty good. I'm certainly not going to complain about that. The next part of getting the Astro Science 3 up and running was, we, we, well, we take the we take the catalogue from here, the train trundles up here and drops them off in this station. So as you can see, we've now got a healthy supply, or at least a supply, of no, 1,000 1, tier 1, 1,100 tier 2, and, and 66 tier 3. So we don't have a huge amount of tier 3, but when, a train, when the train comes back up again, it'll top that up. It'll be fine. Those are being fed through here. They're, they are available to be made into the insights, but I haven't upgraded these yet because I'm a little bit... Concerned is too strong a word, but I, I, I wanted to make sure we could get the science done before we started upgrading, uh, doing the upgrades over here to make things more efficient. But this means I'm now feeding in the tier 3 catalogues here. We've got a supply of um, error frame scaffolds coming in here, and that means along with the tier 2 science packs that are coming through here, we're now able to make the tier 3 science packs. And these are currently idle. Why are you idle? Oh. What? How, 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 how does this even work? What, 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 why is this wrong? Oh! Okay, we have got to the point where we now have enough tier 3 science packs. It's, this, this belt is full, it's going all the way up to here, it's absolutely full. So we've got, we've got enough tier 3 science packs. The, the, the system works. Um, I'm <laughs> it says a lot about my confidence in, in, in my builds that when I looked at it and thought, why are none of these machines running? My first thought was, something's broken, not we've, it's working so well we've got completely caught up. So yes, that's going really well, as you can see. <laughs> So the interesting thing that I've done over here, though, is, I've, is you'll, you'll remember that before we had four of these machines in a row across here that were making the beryllium plates, the beryllium poles, then I was going to make the aeroframe scaffolds here, and then make the, um, the bulkheads, I think it is, for the fourth one here. I've now decided that that is a bad idea, and um, I'm not going to do that. Because you require to make in order to make the uh, the scaffoldings, as you've seen before, requires cryonite and immersion plates. Now I could bring them in. I've got a delivery cannon chest here. I could drop them in here, pass them down, put them into the machine here, and it'd be able to make them. And it'd be that be that would be okay. But we, if we make them down on the planet, then we can make them in a much more efficient way because we can use productivity modules, as you saw in the previous uh, previous videos where I've been showing you the, showing off the system I've got down there that makes them. So that is a much much better way of doing it because it's because pro the productivity means you get extra stuff for free, and who doesn't like free stuff? It also means less complications up here. So in order to do that. I've got a train here that wimbles up and down from the uh, from down on on Norvis goes down goes down the space elevator then comes back up here to this station where it will drop off the aeroframe scaffolds and in the long run I want it to drop off beryllium ingots aeroframe poles and aeroframe scaffolds and eventually the aeroframe bulkheads and they'll all go into this warehouse here and then be passed out and this is basically the same system we've got down here and do, do, doing all of doing the uh, doing the science catalogs and this means I've um, I can then just request what I'm what I'm going to need for this station send the Send the request down, um, and then send the train off to go and get them, and it'll come back and unload here. And this means that up here, things can be generally a lot simpler and more efficient. So I'll be able to get rid of this machine as well, because I'll, I'll be making the aeroframe scaffolds down on Norvis, so that'll be that'll be gone. But this one, I'm going to keep 
because bringing the beryllium, in beryllium up as ingots rather than as plates is more efficient on logistic space, and um, and, it's, there's no, and you can't use productivity modules when you're chopping ingots up into plates, so there's no need to do that down on the ground. So it would be better to bring those up in the train to here, pass them across, and then chop them up into plates here to keep this bit fed. But however, I will still be removing this, and it will also mean I can remove all of this over here. So we're not going to need to bring in the iron ingots anymore, we're not going to need to bring in the beryllium, in beryllium ingots here either, and we're not going to have this transmitter. So all of that can go, and that transmitter shouldn't be there in the first place. So we'll get rid of that. And the nice thing about this is, um, is it's, it's going to make this area a bit simpler. It's going to make it all more efficient. It's just going to be great. The slightly funny bit about this... Oh, here's the train arriving now with some more um, more, more aeroframe scaffolds. The, the slightly funny bit about this is that it's going to mean I'm going to be double handling the beryllium because the plan in the long run is to have, a, is to have spaceships arrive and probably park up here somewhere with exotic materials, so whether that's beryllium ingots, or vita stuff, or holmium ingots, iridium ingots, all those sort of things. There's going to be spaceships arriving up here, dropping them off, putting them into trains that can then bring them to wherever they're needed. Um, but I decided it would be simpler and more, probably more elegant, to actually just have the, have a, there'll be a train that will take beryllium down to Norvis, to put it to, for anything we need it on Norvis for, like making those um, aeroframe scaffolds and the aeroframe poles. But also, it will then bring the ing bring the uh, beryllium back up again, up back up the space elevator to over here. So uh, for this for this bit, so it is a double handling, but it saves us on having a step putting in an extra station over here, and the quantities of beryllium we're going to need. I think that's going to be neater and simpler, and just generally a little bit nicer. It does mean a double handle, as I say. It's going to be taken down the elevator and then brought back up again. However, I don't think it's going to be going up and down in enormous quantities. And transferring stuff through the space elevator is pretty cheap. So, yeah, I'm kind of okay with it. I don't think I don't think it's a serious problem. I am, however, a little bit perturbed by the uh, lack of beryllium down here. So, so I think we're going to have to look into that at some point. I don't think I've turned it off. I think it must just all be all be going to the to the to the planet. So we're going to need a lot more beryllium in the future. The exciting part about getting Astro Science 3 up and running, and this is a bit of a spoiler for the next stage, of, or a later stage of the video, but however, this has allowed us to get spaceship research up and up and running. So we've now got down here, we've got things like rocket booster tanks, we've got spe rocket engines, we've got spaceship doors, spaceship walls, spaceship floors, spaceship consoles. We can now build our own spaceships. Well... We can, in theory, now build our own spaceships. However, um, we're going to need all of those parts, and all those parts are going to require large amounts of beryllium, I suspect. So let's, let's have a look. Uh, so yeah, there you go. Aeroframe poles, um, other, um, and, and astrometric astro catalogs, interesting. Um, Aeroframe bulkheads, which we aren't even making yet. Um, bulkheads again, and again and scaffolds for that one and for that one so you see there's a lot of there's a lot of um, beryllium stuff that we're going to need for making all of these things so i think what we're probably going to do is upgrade everything to the point where we're bringing bury bringing beryllium in by spaceship to up here, probably using the Misfortune, our free spaceship that we scavenge from an asteroid field, to do the first few runs just to get a bit of stuff available so we can, we can get started. And then after that, we can then build custom spaceships that we're going to use for these, these runs specifically, and then do beryllium first, then probably vulcanite and cryonite, I suspect, because they tend to be the things you need en masse. Although they're needed in lots of different places as well, so yeah, I'm not sure. We shall see. Um, but anyway, we will eventually break, uh, build out spaceships for all of the different uh, resources we want to bring in. But that's going to come much later on. There's quite a lot to do before that. The other thing I spent an inord inordinate amount of time. Basically, that, that, was, that, that bit was probably the first half of the stream, and then the second half of the stream was trying was working on basically working on something you can't even see any evidence for up here. <laughs> so at the moment, as you're probably aware, we're bringing up all of the resources for the uh, Norbit bus, that's this monstrosity that goes all the way across here. All of that is coming up by rocket from Norvis. And I don't know if you've noticed, but I don't really like rockets. Uh, there's a lot of logistics required in, in, in making sure you've got all of the rocket components for it. So it's a bit of a it's a bit of a faff and a bit of an effort. It's just and so it, it'd be rather nice to be able to move on from that and just do, and do things in a different way. And that's one of the things the space elevator is absolutely perfect for, getting, getting you away from old, outdated logistics. So at the moment, we still have the rocket landing pad here. We still have a rocket at the other end. It's still bringing stuff up because it, it, it's a work in progress at the moment. But... Down here on Norvis, I've set up this monstrosity, and this genuinely is a monstrosity. <laughs> um, and this is for this is to put is to allow us to have a train here, which is going to completely replace that rocket. 
So, whereas over here where the rocket is, we've got again the same sort of thing. We've got all of the uh, we've got all of the resources coming off the uh, off the bus, and then we're feeding it through a sortimatron across here that looks at looks at the, uh, the the signals being sent down from Norbit and says, okay, there's that if if there's less than zero small pet single cylinder engines then allow this belt this belt to run and it'll pass them through here and the single cylinder engines will get loaded into the rocket you've seen this working before so many times so that's that's fine it's it's it, it works it's got sort of a little bit expanded and cobbled together and so forth over the time we've been building it but it does work and we've got all these rocket components along here that are that we're making into into the building into into rockets to send them up there and there is most of a rocket's worth of stuff in in the rocket ready to go up over here, we've got the same sort of thing where all of the resources are being brought in and then they're being passed up along here and then we're, we're looking at each one in turn to say, well, if there's fewer than, if there's fewer than zero um, small electric motors, then this belt should run and they'll be passed through. And, and there are fewer than zero at the moment, apparently. So we are passing them through here. They're going, they're going in, in, in through, the, through the belts here and then eventually they will make it up to go into the train. Now, the train is smaller than the rocket. The rocket has 500 stacks. The train is only 100 stacks between the two, uh, between, between two, two wagons. I think, yeah, 100 because there's 50 in each like that. So the train is going to have to go five times as often. But I don't think that's a problem because the trains can rattle back and forth fairly easily without any serious issues and just keep everything and, and just bring all the stuff up. And I've just noticed I've missed some belts out along here. That's a, there should be a belt there, there, there and there to allow the, uh, to, to allow the other, other wagon to get filled up. But anyway, yes, the uh, having having the system of trains should 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 allow the, all everything to go up. It'll the, the train will be going up more often than, than the rocket. But sending the train up is very very cheap. Sending a rocket is quite expensive. So I think that's fine. I think the throughput will probably be okay. We shall see. But yeah, it's loading in exactly the same way. But at the moment, the signals aren't all aren't quite configured properly. There's we're duplicating between the between the rocket and the train. But I mean that just means we'll get a few extra batteries, a few extra steel plates. It, it, it doesn't matter. That's all. That's all fine. So yes, feeding all that through here, and you can see which ones we need. Not just because it's on the belt, but you've got these little green lights on the ones that are going, and little red lights on the ones that we've got enough of and are being stopped. So that's that's quite nice. The process of putting all of this into the train and sending it up there it was it it's it's straightforward and simple. It, it was a, a lot to put to put it together, yes, because there's a lot of belts to go in there. But the sim the, the concept is very very straightforward. It's exactly the same as what I used here for the um, for the astro science. It's what Mike has used here for the more or less what Mike's used here, although I've done it in a, in a slightly more my way. Um, for the for the for the material science, it's, it's the same as they're all they're all basically the same sort of system. You get a signal down, and you load stuff into the train until you've got all of the until you've got a chunk of the stuff you need. You send the train off, then the train comes back, gets some more of the stuff, and so on. It just keeps going round and round until until everything's happy, and then it'll idle. The difficult part of this was getting everything on into position here, and so the fir the first thing I needed to do was look at all of the resources that are being fed into the rocket off the bus, and also think about anything else we might want to send up and put on the bus as well. Although I didn't think too hard about that, so all of these things needed to be taken from the bus. So for something like uh, what's what's a good example? Something we make on the bus? Yes, let's use these single cylinder engines for example. So these are being made all the way down the other end of the bus, all the way down. Um, here, so down here, yes, here, here we go, this is where they're made. So making some single cylinder engines, they're then going all the way along the bus and they're going into the rocket and they're also being used by lots of other things like making for making inserters and all kinds of stuff. So well, for every single resource like this, I've put in a splitter and then I've fed them down, 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 down and onto this system of belts along here. Ignore the ones that are going upwards, I'll explain those in a minute. So again, we've got, say, big electric motors. Those are being made over somewhere, somewhere way down the bus, here. So again, I had to put in a splitter so they could carry on down the bus for all the extra things that are down here that, that also need them, and also then feed them back up the bus so, that could be, so that they could then be fed down this massive chonker of a belt all the way down here to go into the, to then be able to be fed up into the, uh, into, into the, uh, into the rocket down here. Um, what's going on here? Oh right, yes, so they all come across here and then loop across because these are all ones that are basically just for the bus and come up here. So things like the, the motors, the, the the engines and so on, they were relatively straightforward. It was just a case of, well, they're needed on the bus and they're needed in the train. So we'll split it. We'll send them both ways. Fine. Not an issue. Things like science, science cards, on the other hand, 
as we go forwards, these are only going to be wanted on in the train. They're not going to be wanted in the rocket. So for something like this, I've actually reversed the bus all the way from wherever it goes into the into the rocket, uh, if I can find it. So here, for example, this, this belt is for the gold tech cards. Those, I've reversed this entire belt, so it now goes, this flows in this direction. You can see we're making a few of them, and then they're being put onto the belt that goes all the way along here. And then we've got um, gold and grey ones, and so this, this belt has been reversed, because we don't, want to, we don't want to carry on putting those in the rocket. That's a waste. That, so yeah, that's that's all, all the things that are made on basically all the things that are made on the bus we fed back upwards and back up the bus and put them back into the train that way. Additionally, there are other things that we are making off the bus and then feeding over. So things like concrete and blue circuits and so on. And each of those, somebody else did this bit. I don't know whether it was Mike or Tristan. I think it was one of those two. Um, but then there's belts from from all of these stations. All these stations up here, we have belts flowing through here and then down here, and that's the top row. And then from the second row of stations, we've got another s series of belts coming down here. And then from the third row of stations, another series of belts. So that's why they're sort of split up into four. We've got the top row of stations, the second row of stations, the third row of stations, and then stuff that's made on the bus. Um, so maybe we should be considering moving some of this stuff off the bus. I'm not sure. But at the moment, that's how it's working, and it's going quite well. So that brings all of the resources we could possibly want to take up to uh, Norbit. Well, most of the resources we could want to take up to Norbit, because there's still a few things like um, beryllium ingots and goodness knows what else. But all those are, all those are brought to over here. And then I had to put together this complicated convolution in order to get all of the um, all of the stuff off the bus here, and then feed it up onto, onto here. And the way the way this works, it, 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 each one each individual one of these is fairly simple. As you can see here, the green circuits come in. We've got a splitter. It passes them up this way. It goes under under the stuff that's above, and then we've got a belt of uh, green circuits coming up here. In all, the thing is though, in order to get all of the different resources out and packed in like this. There's only so close you can put these things in. So, for example, I can't take the glass off with an inserter to go up up this row, because if I put it in uh, to go up this row, sorry, because if I put it in here, then it would interfere with this this stone this uh, coal inserter. So it has to be a little bit further back. And so, uh, so what I've done is I've gone downwards in diagonals like this every four, and then another row that's offset slightly, and another row that's offset slightly more. So yeah, they're not in the same order up here as they were before, because you've got coal there and glass over here, and whereas, um, whereas in this one's coal, then, then glass, then rare metals, and so on. But it does mean all of these come up, and I've, 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 used, I've managed to fit it all into this space because they are able to, they're able to interleave quite nicely. So um, yes, that has worked, and I'm sort of quite pleased that it did because it was rather fiddly. Once it comes out of the top of here, as you can see, we're just then joining joining all the all the belts up with splitters, and uh, so ha halving the number, then quartering the number, then eighthing the number, and then we're not actually sixteenthing the number with this one because we've got belts coming out of both of them, and that's just to keep the keep the flow rate up, so we can we can load the train up reasonably quickly, even when there's lots and lots of different things wanting to be put into it. Um, and then up here, actually, we're splitting it anyway, so the throughput is is kind of I'm not going to say it's a nonsense, but we're not going to get full throughput on these belts any uh, on these belts anyway. But, you know, this, this'll do. It'll be more than fast enough to fill the train up with, with the resources we need. And the fact that these are green belts, whereas the inputs are blue belts, mean we should be able to chuck more than one resource through at a time. So, yes, earlier I alluded to how there are a couple of belts going in the wrong direction uh, down here. And this is because apparently I'm, um, I, I'm, apparently I'm a dumbass and didn't, don't check things very carefully, which I think we already knew. Um, but this was because I brought uh, rocket control modules and... Um, satellite telemetry data down here on these two belts and was getting ready to load them into the train when after a bit of checking and, and making sure we realized that actually neither of those are being fed into the rocket over here over over here um, because they're not actually needed up in space the satellite telemetry is needed over here to make the uh, the gold tech cards fine uh, we yes we do need we need that but we don't need it up in space and the rocket control modules are needed for making rocket parts and nuclear bombs and a few other things and currently are not needed up in space so <laughs> because those things are both quite expensive I reverse the belts and I'm trying to pump them back in again uh, with limited success with the uh, with the rocket control modules because we seem to have made quite a lot more and just filled the filled the filled the belt up with them. So uh, at some point, I'll try and get them all stuffed back in again. But for now, it's um, it's taking a bit of effort, which so it's a little bit unfortunate. But we'll uh, we'll get that sorted out at some point eventually, hopefully, and uh, hopefully not by just picking it all up and shoving it into the chest of shame. 
Uh, as a side note, to finish off what I said earlier, I believe Mike set up at least most, if not, but probably not all of the belts coming from up here, because he needed them for the material science. I think Tristan set up the rest of the ones from down here um, while I was while I was doing um, all of this monstrosity and, and, and also this monstrosity. It's been a very monstrosity uh, session. <laughs> so this system is essentially finished now. All it needs is a station putting in up at the top here to accept all the all the resources that come in. To basically probably get rid, just get rid of this um, this landing pad here and bring all the resources in by train. Uh, potentially, we could use one of these stations. These do dump straight into the um, in, in, into the into the storage system down here. Uh, but I think I'd rather not, to be quite honest with you. And whilst we are going to be getting rid of a lot of the uh, the bits and pieces, a lot of these inputs um, in the future, I think I'd rather I'd rather just have it right down here, so it's feeding directly into the in, in, into the warehouse rather than having it going down quite a long belt before it gets there. The other big thing we were working on, and I said when I say we, I mean Tristan. Um, the other thing, the other big thing that was, was worked on in the last session was scrap recycling. So as you remember, we have in, we have at least when the material science is running, we have enormous quantities of scrap that pour along these belts up the middle and then get fed into the into the recyclometrons here. And they were previously getting fed and then to produce uh, the various ores, which are then being fed into these machines to cook them up into the into the ingots and then put them into these trains so that they can be then taken away and used wherever they're needed around the, around the space station. Great. Um, however, we were running into problems where we weren't really using the copper up fast enough and to be honest, a lot of this stuff was just—it was just sort of sitting there, and we weren't really, weren't really dealing with it, dealing with it as well as we would, or as quickly as we would like to. So, what we've decided to do is we're still going to carry on processing the scrap up here. So you can see it's being fed in, but now it's being fed out this way, as you as you can see. Uh, the heavy oil is being kept up here, but the scrap is now being passed over down into this warehouse, which is which is a warehouse that's just gradually filling up because the system is only partially finished. But the theory is this will all go into here. Whenever any trains that bring stuff up from Norvis to Norbit are going back down again, they will stop off at one of these stations and load up with all of the stuff that's that's in these warehouses take that down to Norvis with them where they can then empty it all out and it can be then be reprocessed in the in the smelteries down on Norvis which are significantly more efficient this gets round a number of problems uh, Firstly, it makes things more efficient, as I say, which is obviously obviously better because resources are expensive, and so we get if you get more of them for free, then that's great. Also, it means stuff comes out as ingots, which is a bit easier to transport around, so that's even better. But also, also, it means everything is then being produced in one cent in one central place, and so. When we've got loads and loads of copper being produced here, rather than scrambling to try and find somewhere to use it all up up in Norvis, which is proven difficult, we can actually we can then just send it off to be made into maybe into green circuits or red circuits down on Norvis, where there's a huge insatiable demand for copper. So essentially, this is this, we're treating this basically like a uh, like another core miner, where we're generating pseudo free resources and then shipping them off pri at high priority to the smelteries to be turned into the into all of the uh, into the other um, into the metals and or the ingots of the metals specifically that we need because then those can be brought up however we want and then perhaps still make make their way over to um, this is the wrong one over to the uh, this area over here where we've got things like copper ingots and rare metals coming in here and then being being dealt with but if we if they're, if they're all coming from a central place we can make sure that's got the maximum efficiency and also it just keeps everything a bit more controlled and I was going to say refined, but y y you know what I mean. It keeps it makes it a bit easier to work out where everything is going, to, where everything is going from if it's all stored in one central location. So that's that's the plan. We did, however, have to slap in an emergency um, excess copper disposal system, which is this one. There is a train that comes from the recycling area full of copper, unloads it here, and then, as you can see, this gets passed through as a priority. So if the, as this belt is full, these machines won't run, and this will then come over here to be made into all of the uh, all of the material testing packs. So we, ha we have a way of getting rid of excess copper at the moment. Um, don't tell Mike, he'll be very upset that we've just pushed a belt through the middle of his station. <laughs> So this bit is still a work in progress. The, the top station has been finished. The uh, the bottom station hasn't. So it's a bit like my uh, my bus supply set station. The pickup station, the pickup end is basically finished and available. The, the the other end hasn't been done yet. Down at the other end, we have the other half of this system, which is the downstream drop off stations. So when a tr when one of these trains comes out from the uh, space elevator, it will then immediately go into one of these stations. It'll stop. It'll dump all of that ore out here and anything else that we decide we want to dump down onto Norvis. Uh, that can then go down this massive network of belts. This will flood all. All the way down here and then well Tristan's put down the landfill for the rails here but not the actual rails themselves uh, there'll be more rails coming down here and then we've got we're gonna have a system of stations down 
somewhere down here that will essentially be high priority or pick up stations and anything else we decide we want to bring down stations. And there'll be a Sortimatron in here as well to make sure all of the right resources go into the right places. Um, alternatively, we could just have a miscellaneous junk, a miscellaneous ore station and have all of the all of the ores go into a, into a single train and then take that up and dump it out up here and put it into the sort of matron that comes out that's on the output of the uh, of the core of the uh, core fragment processing I don't think there's any point in doing it that way we might as well just have a separate what have, have a separate system for doing that but this is it's, it's an, int an intriguing idea um, I, I I could I could see us going either way with that I do note with with some interest that all of the trains here seem to be full which is very surprising I guess we're apparently just not using resources up quickly enough uh, that's that's a surprise I am even even this warehouse is full. Wow! I, oh wait, hang, oh, there's no iron coming. Oh, because we're, we're backed up. We're backed up completely on. What are we backed up on? Oh, we're backed up completely on uranium. Apparently, apparently that's the thing that has caused everything to fail. That's a weird thing to have overloaded on. I'm astonished. Um, I do notice we've got quite a lot. We've got a lot of spare copper and a lot of spare uh, rare metals, but that's okay. They haven't backed up all the way completely yet. There's still a bit of room in these in these strong boxes. Uh, not very much, but there is still a little bit of, of, of room in the strong boxes. But to, for it to be uranium that we completely backed up on—that's incredible. Because we only get you only get a 32% chance of a uranium out each time this the system runs. Wow. Anyway, that has thoroughly distracted me from what I was talking about with the recycling system. Because the other half of the recycling system is that, or the other half of the modifications that have been made to the recycling system is that Tristan has put in this train here, which is bringing up batteries, sulphur, iron ingots, and copper ingots. These are all, as you can see, being, do -do 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 being melded together onto one set of belts here and then fed into a, tra into a train here. We are also supposed to be bringing um, data card substrates and red circuits up from here, but there seems to be a supply problem of those. And I wonder what this one is. Blue circuits as well is a problem, and flat ba and uh, new batteries also a problem. So we need to get all of those up and running and sat to satisfy this train. You'll notice we've got a green light on that one and that one and that one. So we don't need the blue circuits, but we do need all of the other ones, and we don't have any of them. So that's a problem. Um, but when those eventually feed, find their way, find some supply, we'll feed them all through into the train exactly the same way as before. And that gets brought up to be dropped here in the in the re this is again the recycling area. So we've got the recy the main recyclers up here, then the um, and then uh, cleaning up cleaning fluids, and then down here. This so there used to be a rocket landing pad in here, but that has been replaced because, as previously mentioned, rockets are an awful awful th awful awful thing. <laughs> so that's been replaced by this train. So a train will turn up here. It'll dump all of those resources out onto here, and they'll go through be fed th fed through here down the system and, and in order to be made into in, into all the all the bits and pieces we need up here and that is that is working there's nothing wrong with it except for a, a supply problem we don't have any red circuits at the moment which kind of leads on to the memory card problem i was discussing earlier so yes this this is this is nice. again it's, it's the same sort of system you're, you're seeing elsewhere we're sending a signal down saying hey we need this stuff and then the signal at the bottom is is uh, received and loads the train up with the appropriate stuff which then comes up here and unloads so the I should probably mention in, in passing, there's, there's two different types of train running here. We've got the normal ones, which receive a signal that tells them what, what, what needs to be put into them, like this one. This one is just being filled up at the moment with blue circuits, uh, some rare metals and some plastic bar. Sure, that's, what, that's what's needed. Over here, same sort of thing. We've got coal, we've got aeroframe scaffolds, we've got glass, all being loaded into the train in, 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 the, in the appropriate quantities. The other sort is the one, like the one that comes here, and you'll notice there is no signal receiver up here. That's for the other type of train, the ones where you have specific slots for specific items, like this one, and the one and the, and the ones that bring over the catalogs. So here, this this will always load up. This will always load this part up with aeroframe scaffolds. This one with beryllium poles. This one with ingots. This one with bulkheads, or what, whatever whatever I decide to whatever you decide to put in it. And so it will always it will always travel down when it runs out of one resource, and then come back up with. A full, a full row of each of the resources it's supposed to have. So it, it's a tiny bit less efficient, but it is a lot simpler if you don't need too many different resources and you expect to need them all in relatively similar and relatively low numbers. So for this sort of thing, this is great, for and for the catalogues as well, but when you want a bajillion different things, like we've got going on here, it's not so great and you probably just want to have a, a complete mixed train. And at that point you have to use signals and stuff like that and, and uh, make things a little bit more complicated. Okay, I do believe that is halfway through the uh, the things we got up to last time, so I think that's an excellent place to stop. I hope you've been enjoying the other uh, video. Please come along on Monday to join us for the next stream, where we'll should be finishing off these systems and then probably going off on a bit of a sort of a 
not a rebuild, but a sort of a going off and trying to boost the supplies of all of the all of the resources because we've I've, I've been seeing a lot of things where things are struggling because there just there just isn't enough beryllium or there isn't there aren't enough red circuits or whatever. There are lots of problems around those sort of things, so we're going to need to be fixing those. But for the time being. This is this is this is working well. It just needs a little bit of a. It just sometimes struggles a bit for resources. <laughs> so there's there's a lot of work to do in there. Then on Wednesday I shall be continuing my XCOM 2 stream. That's going. It's going in the very first stream. I did lose one of my soldiers, but we'll ignore that. <laughs> Sorry about that, Mango. Um, and we'll yeah we'll, we'll uh, <laughs> that, that'll be carrying on. Hopefully I'll keep everyone alive. If you want to join in, there's still time to uh, submit a soldier through the uh, by using the XCOM 2 Propaganda Center, the free download from uh, from Steam. And if you send someone over, then uh, send send me a soldier over, then I shall add them to the roster. And you never know, they might become a hero. Tuesdays is uh, Factorio Video Day, so there's um, we, we, at the moment I'm trying to alternate between a tutorial and uh, a Mark Pyanodon video. Which exactly which video you get will depend on whether you're a supporter or not, because supporters get access to the uh, the videos a week early. <laughs> Finally, Friday and Saturday are these update videos, as you're well aware because you're watching one right now. Those come out every Friday and Saturday and give you an idea of what's been going on in the last stream. So make sure you're subscribed to the channel so you don't and you're not going to miss so you don't miss out on anything. Uh, come along and watch on Twitch if you want to see the stream on Monday. And as ever, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you tomorrow for the next half of this video. Bye-bye.